Hi everyone, it's Brent from RX Duo. I have Christian here with me, and today we will be talking to Lindsay about ambulatory care clinical pharmacy. All right, Lindsay, tell us your path on how you became an ambulatory care clinical pharmacist. Okay, so I went to undergrad for biochemistry, um, so I had my bachelor's in biochemistry, uh, and after graduation, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to go on and get my master's or PhD um, in chemistry or biochemistry, so I went and worked for Procter Gamble Pharmaceuticals as a lab assistant for a year, um, and at that point, I realized that that was not for me and that I wanted to work with patients, so I started to uh, look into pharmacy at that point. Uh, I I found an accelerated three-year program and I thought, what the heck, let's apply. Uh, so that's what I did. I got my PharmD. After getting my PharmD, I decided to do a PGY-1 residency program. Uh, I did that in the VA health system uh, where pharmacists are providers and I got a lot of opportunity to work in ambulatory care uh, under collaborative practice. Uh, so I decided then to go on and become a uh, ambulatory care me to do a PGY-2 in ambulatory care. Uh, I did that in the VA health system as well and had a lot of great experiences working in a, an array of clinics. Uh, after that, I, I came to my current position at the health system I am at now. So tell us some of the typical daily activities that you do. Well, uh, I currently run an anticoagulation clinic under a collaborative practice agreement. Uh, I also work in a congestive heart failure clinic, uh, which is not under a collaborative practice agreement. Instead, I, I work with a nurse practitioner there. Uh, so depending on the day or the clinic, the activities are a little different. Um, for the anticoagulation clinic, we usually start around 9 in the morning. We see patients in 10-minute uh, intervals, 10 to 15-minute intervals. It's changed over time due to demand. We've had to kind of cut down the appointment slots. Uh, we see anywhere from 20 to 30 patients in a day. Face-to-face, uh, -face, we uh, use a point-of-care testing device. We get an INR. Uh, we have complete control over adjusting their warfarin, um, also their bridge therapy if they're going to need Lovenox or um, if they're on Lovenox until they're therapeutic. Uh, also, um, we do over-the-phone INR management for patients who live in outlying areas and get their INRs from labs. Uh, we do bill our face-to-face -face patients uh, using uh, Incident 2 billing or 99211. So we do actually make our salary back, um, which is you know, kind of rare in pharmacy, uh, so we, we, we don't cost anything based on our billing. Uh, for the congestive heart failure clinic, that's a half-day clinic. Those are 40-minute appointment slots that are shared with a nurse practitioner and a nurse navigator. They involve um, a transition of care component where we're reviewing med histories um, and making sure the patients have accurate medication lists and making sure their medications are not exacerbating heart failure, um, checking to make sure they're on a appropriate heart failure regimens. Are there any non-patient care activities that you're involved with? Uh, as a clinical pharmacist, and, and you'll find this uh, with most clinical pharmacists, and if you watch Brent's video, you'll you'll see this as well, uh, we tend to get involved with uh, a number of committees. I'm on a 30-day readmission committee for congestive heart failure. Um, I'm also on uh, some med reconciliation uh, committees and the residency advisory committee. I also help um, with our PGY-1 residency, pharmacy residency program. Um, I also precept residents and I precept students as well. So what advice would you give to a student, let's say, if they wanted to get into ambulatory care pharmacy? Uh, I, with all clinical pharmacy, I mean, there are some different routes that you can take depending on your experience. However, if uh, somebody's in pharmacy school right now, uh, my suggestion would be to make sure you get some good advanced practice rotations in an ambulatory care setting um, so that you can find out for sure that, that that's what you like. Um, it is quite a bit different than inpatient clinical pharmacy. Um, the majority of my day is spent with patients and interacting with the patients as opposed to working with a healthcare team. Um, so it is, it is different and you have to um, really know that that's what you want to do. I do have a passion for patient education um, 
and, and that patient interaction and patient advocacy. So I would get some advanced practice rotations to get some experience. Then I would definitely do a PGY-1 program that offered some ambulatory care um, component. Uh, and then from there I would do a PGY-2 in ambulatory care. I'm pretty partial to the VA health system for ambulatory care pharmacists. I don't work in the VA system. Um, system now after completing my residencies, but they're a really great learning environment, especially for ambulatory care because there's so much um, pharmacists can get involved with in so many different types of clinics. Um, each VA is different, but there really is usually a lot of ambulatory care exposure and experience in those programs. What are your thoughts on board certification for ambulatory care pharmacy? I think it's important to get board certified, depend, you know, whatever clinical pharmacy um, you're in, if they have a specialty certification exam, I, I think that it, you should take it. Um, I also think for ambulatory care, uh, it's probably would be difficult or not impossible to get the, the BCPS, um, but it's not as applicable as the ambulatory care specialty exam. Um, we don't deal with things like IV antibiotics or, you know, TPNs or, or, or you know, those sort of um, very acute, specific inpatient things. We do a, deal a lot more with patient advocacy, um, patient assistance programs, billing, um, and I think the ambulatory care specialty uh, exam has a lot of that and, and is much more focused for somebody who is an ambulatory care pharmacist, and I think it's very important. So where can someone find more information about the board exam for ambulatory care pharmacy? That would be on, um, it's through ACCP or the BPS website. You can find out um, for all of the specialty exams, including the BCPS, uh, you can see what the requirements are. You can't just take the BCACP. Um, there are requirements to, um, to take it, just like there are for the critical care exam and the psychology exam, um, as well as oncology. So, Where would you go for residency information? For residency information, of course, um, the best place to go is the ASHP residency directory. Um, or, you know, if you're having, if you have rotations or mentors um, at, at institutions that offer residency programs, they tend to be a really great resource. If you have any questions for us, you can ask us. Um, Brent and myself uh, are very involved with our residency program. We've both done two years of residency. Um, we've helped many students, um, you know, with their applications for residency. So feel free to ask us as well. So we do have our contact form on Rx Duo's website as well. You can find us on social media as well, correct? Yep, you can find us on the website or on social media or you could uh, leave a, you know, a comment here. Okay, thank you very much, Lindsay. Thanks, Brent.